Shutter Island unfurls like a mind-bending puzzle, inviting you into a narrative that blurs the boundaries of reality and perception. Set against the backdrop of an isolated mental institution, as you delve into this enigmatic world, prepare to be spellbound by a chilling journey that challenges the very fabric of truth and sanity. The movie begins in Boston in 1954. A man named Teddy, who is a marshal, and his new partner are sailing through the sea. Teddy reveals that his wife died in an apartment fire. They are going to a mental hospital for criminals. They arrive and are greeted by the deputy warden of Shutter Island. The other police wardens gaze at them. The warden drives them inside the mental facility. As they arrive, the warden tells them that there are three wards, and Ward C is the most dangerous of all and is forbidden. They are required by the warden to surrender their firearms. They reluctantly do so. Finally, they get in to see Dr. John. They meet numerous patients, including a woman who looks sick and whose hair is falling out. They go inside a room and meet Dr. John, who insists that he wants to cure these people. Teddy asks the doctor about Rachel. The doctor says that Rachel drowned her three kids, put them on their dining table, and ate dinner right after. Teddy sees a brief flashback in his head, and it makes him dizzy. The doctor says that Rachel believes that the institution was her home, and they don't know how she got out of her cell. The marshals check her room to see if there are any clues to her whereabouts. Teddy finds a note just beneath the floor. The marshals insist that they need to see every profile of the guards and prisoners, but the doctor is hesitant to help them. Then the marshals join the warden in the search for Rachel outside the facility. The warden insists that she didn't swim out or go inside any of the poisonous caves. They go back to the facility to interview the staff. One of them is Glenn, who is the watcher. When Rachel escapes and reveals that he went to the bathroom for one minute, one of the nurses tells Teddy that she was in a group therapy session, and Dr. Sheehan led this session. Eddie insists they need to talk to this doctor, but Dr. John says that the doctor left to take a vacation. They try to call the doctor but the storm prevents them from doing so. They leave the facility in disbelief and go to Dr. John's house. As they wander around the house, another doctor named Dr. Nering is also in the house. Teddy keeps seeing visions of snowy weather. Teddy reveals a memory of when he was in the army, killing enemies of the state. Teddy insists that they need all the personal files. Dr. Nering abruptly declines. Teddy is outraged and tells them that they will take the ferry back tomorrow morning. They laugh and go to bed at the facility's headquarters. As they go to bed, Teddy sees a memory of his wife, and his wife tells him that Rachel never left. He hugs her as blood comes pouring out of her head, and his wife turns into ash. Due to the heavy rain and storm, both of them can't get a ferry and decide to continue the investigation. They ask Dr. John if they can speak to the ones who were in the group therapy session. They interview them one by one, and one of them is Mr. Breen, who slashed a nurse in the face. While the interrogation escalates, Teddy gets a little aggressive and scratches his pencil vigorously on the paper, as he doesn't get any information from Mr. Breen. Next up is Mrs. Karen, who is rather normal compared to the others. They ask her about Rachel and Dr. Sheehan but she doesn't give them any information that they don't already know. As she asks for water from Chuck, he steals the notebook and writes something in it. Chuck asks Teddy who Andrew is, just as Teddy asks every patient about him. Teddy tells Chuck that Andrew was the maintenance guy for the apartment for his wife, and he lit the apartment on fire. Teddy also reveals that Andrew burned a school and got thrown into Shutter Island. The two of them go to a secluded cemetery, and Teddy reveals what Mrs. Karen wrote in his notebook. The weather worsens, and they decide to hide momentarily in a cabin in the woods. Teddy reminisces about the war and the dead bodies he saw in frozen condition. He and his comrades killed hundreds of enemy soldiers who surrendered, raining bullets on them. He insists that that's not warfare. They murdered them. Teddy insists that this place, Shutter Island, is experimenting on the prisoners' minds. They're experimenting on people. Teddy plans to take part in human experiments, but his partner Chuck is not sure if it's a great idea. Chuck insists that the higher-ups on Shutter Island purposefully wanted Teddy to come. Teddy insists that they are going to get off the island, 
Teddy and Chuck sneak into a doctor's meeting, and Dr. John reveals to them that Rachel has been found. They go to Rachel's room and ask her where she is. She says that she made breakfast for her kids and thought of Teddy. She hugs Teddy and insists that he bury her. They go back to John's place and Teddy is having a severe headache. John gives him pills to stop the pain and get him to bed to rest. He sees a high-ranking officer looking at him as he sleeps. He remembers the mountains of corpses on which he fought in his last war. He then sees Andrew sitting on Nering's couch. He then sees Rachel with her dead kids, bloodied right there on the floor. Teddy picks up one of Rachel's children and puts it in the lake alongside a bloodied Rachel. As Teddy wakes up, he sees his wife and tells her that Andrew is alive. He wakes up again, now waking into reality. He and Chuck go outside and see the patients in disarray. In all of the chaos, they sneak into Ward C for a chance to find Enru. They meet an officer who says that some prisoners have escaped. Teddy tells Chuck that he can feel lettuce. They chase him, and Teddy gets choked from the back. Teddy pinches the bald man and tries to choke him to death. An officer arrives, and Chuck helps him get the prisoner back in his cell. As Teddy wanders to the ward, he hears a man whispering the name of Lettuce. Teddy meets a man in a prison named George, and George tells Teddy that he is there because of him. George seems to be an old friend of Teddy's. He asks Teddy if he can trust Chuck. George also says that he can't kill Lettuce and uncover the truth. At the same time, he sees his wife once again, and George tells him that he needs to let her go. George tells Teddy that the latest transfer was to another place. Teddy meets with Chuck, and Teddy is persistent about going to the lighthouse. Chuck tells Teddy that they have the intake form from Lettuce, which confirms that he is there. Teddy seems to mistrust Chuck, as he insists on going to the lighthouse alone. After realizing that going to the lighthouse is nearly impossible, Teddy goes back to Chuck, but doesn't find him, and then he sees a body below the cliff. He tries to go down and grab the intake form, which gets blown away by the wind. The body vanishes, and he sees hundreds of rats. He sees a fire being lit and goes to it inside the cave with a lit fire. He sees a woman holding a knife, and it is Rachel. She reveals that she is a doctor and has never had children. She says she questions some large shipments containing psychotic drugs and how the island is conducting human experiments. She also reveals that they test patients on Shutter Island to control their minds and use them for the greater good. Rachel says that they are going to use Teddy's trauma to mark him as insane and also use him for the experiments. Rachel asks Teddy if he has had any headaches, and he says yes. She says that all the pills, the foods, and even the coffee contain drugs to make him lose his sanity. Rachel tells Teddy that everybody on the island knows that they are conducting brain surgeries in the lighthouse. Teddy leaves the cave and is met by an official of the island, who drives him back to the facilities. He reaches the facility and meets Dr. John, and John says that an unidentified man had a conversation with George. Teddy asks John if he has seen his partner Chuck, but the doctor says that Teddy went to the island alone. As Teddy wanders in the facility, he meets Dr. Nering, who catches him holding an injection and presses him against the wall, stealing the injection. Dr. Nering insists that Teddy is mentally wounded, and then Teddy injects it into Dr. Nering. Teddy goes out and slips into a car, and then suddenly the images of his wife start showing up again. His wife tells him that he needs to go to the ferry, but Teddy is convinced that Chuck is in that lighthouse. Teddy lights the car, and he sees his kid with his wife as he leaves, running toward the lighthouse. Teddy swims toward the lighthouse, takes down a guard, steals his shotgun, and rushes ahead. He goes inside the lighthouse, searches every room, and finds Dr. John sitting in the topmost room. John asks Teddy how bad his hallucinations are, and he tells John about Dr. Rachel, and John says that he is being delusional, and that all of this is just his delusion. John reveals that Teddy has actually been here for almost two years now, and they have been giving him treatment for two years. John even presents Teddy with his intake for him, stating he was violent and denying all of his crimes. John presents four names and reveals that all of them were just made up by Teddy and are only anagrams. Dr. John also reveals that Teddy's real name is Andrew, 
and he insists that Teddy tell him that he created another self to escape from his crimes. John says that he is their most dangerous patient and even beats George. Then suddenly, his partner Chuck comes into the room with his suit. Teddy, who is absolutely disgruntled, asks Chuck who the hell he is, and Chuck tells Teddy that he has been his primary psychiatrist for the past two years. John also reveals that they let Teddy wander for two days to conduct his roleplay and to bring him back to sanity. Andrew steals the gun from John and threatens to shoot them. He shoots John right in the chest, but his gun is just a toy. John reveals that Teddy's wife drowned their own kids and that his wife is really Rachel. Andrew holds the pictures of his kids and once again he sees his wife and his daughter. As he now remembers what really happened to him, he goes home and finds his wife, Dolores, sitting beside the lake. His wife in wet clothes kisses him and Andrew wonders where the kids are. He then sees bodies in the lake. The bodies of his children are floating in the lake. He tries to revive them as he mourns and shouts. He carries them and lays them side by side as he can't comprehend what happened. His wife insists on putting them at the table to make them her dolls. She also says to set her free, and then Enru shoots his wife. As he cries, blood pours on her body. He goes back to reality and wakes up, admitting that he killed his wife and murdered his children. He admits that he made up the name Rachel. Enru tells them that Dolores, his wife, said that there was something wrong with her brain, and he just ignored it. John says that Enru needs to accept reality and not go back to his delusions. Enru committed his crimes, but as soon as he went outside and met Dr. Sheehan, he recognized him again as Chuck, and he is once again convinced that something is wrong with Shutter Island. Dr. Sheehan signals to John that Enru has gone back to his delusions and leads him into the custody of the warden to conduct a lobotomy. Enru says his final words to Dr. Sheehan and goes away. Ever pondered the thrill of a cliffhanger? The suspense that makes your heart pound, your mind race, and leaves you wanting more? Well, that's the magic of a cool movie recap, and we've just delved deep into another gripping episode in our series of exotic recaps. What about the ending? Did you like it? The beauty of storytelling is in its unpredictability. And then there are the questions, those lingering thoughts that refuse to be silenced, the gaps in the narrative that keep us guessing. The unanswered questions are the lifeblood of a good movie. Do comment us to let us know about these. How was the story? But we're not done yet. There's more to come, more episodes to dissect, more stories to tell. So, if you enjoyed our journey through this episode, show some love. Hit that like button, share the fun with your friends, and subscribe to our channel for more exciting recaps. Don't forget to tap that bell icon so you never miss an update. Thank you for joining us on this exhilarating ride. Until next time, keep the popcorn ready, keep the suspense alive, and stay tuned for our next recap.